this webinar, uh, you're working hard to build structure within your organization. And you're looking for a system that you can finally hang your hat on. And if you're like most teams, you've either survived without a system or you're relying solely on Excel to run your business. Or you're like the other faction of companies who decide to change your IT systems more times than you can count. Well, today I hope is the day that you can stop spinning your wheels and your team can hang all of those hats they're wearing on one system that every department can use to build their processes. Hi everyone, my name is Brian. I'm the founder of Puzzle. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We'll be reviewing how to master no-code process flows in monday.com, a system your entire team can rely on to build your processes. And by the end of this webinar, my goal is to equip you with the building blocks of monday.com so you can go build at least one of your business processes using this tool. So let's get started. So let's start by framing our conversation about why you joined this webinar today. Maybe the first reason is you're curious about how monday.com can help your team. You've likely heard of monday.com. It's a pretty popular tool. Uh, but, but perhaps you haven't ever seen it used in practice. So today you'll see various real world business use cases for how the, how the tool can help your teams. Maybe it's the second reason. You're a monday.com beginner and you want to advance your skills. Perhaps you've gotten your feet wet with monday.com but want to broaden and deepen your skill set and learn some best practices. We'll be reviewing best practices today as well. And then number three, Maybe you're an advanced monday.com builder and you just want to see more business use cases. If you're an experienced builder at monday.com, then you're going to be able to learn how to sharpen those skills today to build even more efficient workflows uh, in the tool. So the goal today is no matter where you fall on this experience line with monday.com, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced, whether you're just curious about how monday.com can help your team, or you're a beginner, or you've built out workflows within your organization <clears throat> um, across departments, we're going to try and push everyone from whatever position left to the position right. And then the second axis that we're going to be uh, working on is maybe your experience just building processes in general varies. It's possible that you're just curious on how to build processes using no code tools. It's possible that some of the audience has experience building no, no code uh, processes, but wants to advance their skills. And then I imagine we also have some people who have built no code processes across many, many departments. And ultimately in this webinar, we want to get people up into the right <clears throat> where you are on your path to building advanced monday.com workflows that fit your business. And this webinar is going to try and uh, launch you on an express learning curve to the top right of this graph here. So let's get started with what is Monday.com. Monday.com is a visual productivity platform to build and manage your business operations. And what do I mean by business operations? I mean the very processes that make up how each one of your department departments manages their work. So this can look different across many different departments. For instance, your marketing team may build a content calendar in monday.com so that they can manage their posting schedules for emails, social posts, blog articles, you name it. You could also have your sales team use this for contact management so that they can manage their leads and deals throughout the sales process. You also could have your customer success team use monday.com to build a customer onboarding process to manage the onboarding task for new customers that are coming in. You could have a project management board so that none of your internal tasks slip through the cracks. And then your finance team could actually build out invoice tracking using monday.com as well to have a pulse on when items are being paid for. So how is all of this possible? These are just a few of the examples of what you could build on monday.com. But if there is anything within your business that has a process, you're able to build it using monday.com's board at scale. 
So how is this even possible? How could one tool uh, allow you to build all of these different processes um, using just a single board? Well, that's why Monday.com is such a powerful no-code tool for business processes. Monday.com gives you the building blocks with an easy to use interface to go and configure the tool exactly how your business operations works. So today we're gonna to be reviewing what are the Monday.com building blocks. And we're gonna be going through best practices to make sure that we're using these building blocks to build processes properly within the, within the system. So the first building block is boards. It's the best part of Monday.com because boards feel very familiar to Excel, but boards have a ton of added functionality that Excel and Google Sheets don't have out of the box. The second building block is columns. And by columns, I mean column types. This toolkit allows you to define within the board the data that each row of, of um, each row possesses within your board. And then we have views. Views allow you to visualize that data in different ways. Think things like timeline, Gantt charts, calendars. And then we have workflows. Monday.com's workflow building block allows you to automate tasks within your board. And then Monday.com also offers integrations and a way to build dashboards, but today we're not going to deep dive into those two building blocks. We're just going to focus on boards, column types, views, and workflows. So all of these tools are part of Monday.com's feature set, which gives you everything that you need to build a highly scalable and automated business process. So let's start to look at each one of these things individually in the context of examples. So let's start with boards. Boards are tables with rows and columns that you define for your specific process. Let's take an example like a contact board. In this contact board, you can see that there are multiple rows that represent contacts. And there are columns that have data that is relevant to those contacts. We have title, the company of the contact, the type of contact that it is, the priority, the phone, the email of the contact, and then a date that represents the next interaction. So the, this is the basic structure of a Monday.com board. <clears throat> Let's take another example just to see how a board looks within a different context. This is the same type of board. However, we're calling the columns and rows different things. You can see that we have two groups here. We have draft campaigns and live campaigns as two separate groups in the same board. And then we have our rows that represent each individual campaign. And then we have our columns which represent the campaign owner, the channel that we'll be posting the campaign on, a campaign brief, a campaign timeline, and the budget spent for the campaign. So as you can see, the boards aren't much different than Excel. It's rows and columns, but it's important to get these basics down when building out these boards from, for some of the more advanced features that we'll get into for views and workflows. So the best practice for boards is define boards as the processes in your business and use the groups within the boards as the stages that that process goes through. So for content calendar to content management to customer onboarding, project management and invoice tracking, you would just create a board for each one of these processes and then track what are the stages that a piece of content goes through. What are the stages that a contact goes through? And we'll actually be building a live example later on to show you how this actually looks live. So the second building block is columns. And we touched on how columns look in the board, um, but we'll be deep diving specifically on column types. What are columns? Columns within Monday.com are used to represent specific types of properties for that specific row in the board. So let's return back to our example of the contact board. 
our rows represent contacts and we have those columns, title, company, type, priority, phone, email, and next interaction. But each one of these columns are actually just a specific type of data. For instance, this title column is actually just a text column that we've renamed to be title. And company is that same text column that's renamed to, to represent the company. The type column is a status column, and so is the priority set, uh, column as well. We have a phone column to represent the phone number for the contact, an email column to represent the email, and a date column, which we've called next interaction. And so Monday.com gives you a set amount of columns that you can then use and rename to help your team realize the information that should be housed in that particular place. These are called column types. And the same column types are used across boards to build for different processes. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and flip over to the campaigns board for another example. The campaigns board that we were looking at earlier has rows that represent campaigns and columns campaign owner, channel, campaign brief, campaign timeline, and budget spent. But that campaign owner is just the people column that we've decided to name campaign owner. So it's relevant to this specific board. The channel column is a status column that we've named channel and edited the options for the status to represent the different channels that exist for campaigns to be posted on. Campaign brief is a long text column, campaign timeline is a timeline column, and budget spent is a number column. And so really, we could use these same column building blocks to build any process within Monday.com. And so I'm going to kind of flip the hierarchy here. What you're seeing across the top are the most common column types that are used in Monday.com. We have a text field, which you saw earlier in contacts. We have a people column where you're able to assign people within your system, an email column to put in an email, status columns to track uh, things that, that have different states over time or types of items. Dates are used for dates. Numbers are tracked to quantify uh, things for that specific line item and files. And what I've actually done here is I've used a uh, each process that you could potentially build out in monday.com and just gave you an example of how you could use a specific column type to track a specific piece of information for a given process. So the first example is content. So if we were managing content in a board, we would use the text column to track brief notes. We would use the people column to maybe track who requested this content internally within the organization. You would use an email column and rename it requester email so that you can track who requested this and update them as the content gets developed. Maybe you create a status column in your content management board that tracks the type of content that it is, much like our campaigns board example that we just saw. You could use a date to represent the published date, a numbers column to build out a task size for the person who's going to be building this out which may be beneficial for workload management to see how much of the burden of the content that's being developed is assigned to certain team members. And then you could use a files column to house any social files that go along with this piece of content. You could do the same thing with contacts, which we actually saw in our example earlier. Text column can be used for first name. People column can be used for the contact owner internally email for contact email, status to track the lead status over time, date for last contacted date, touch points to track the number of touch points that have happened over time, and then maybe you track proposal documents in a file type column. And I'm not going to go through all of these examples, but you can see as I'm just adding new types of processes, I'm using these same column types, defining them different and making them relevant to the process that I'm trying to track. So you could build out and use these column types for deal tracking, for customer onboarding tracking, 
for tracking invoices, for tracking employees through their life cycle, to track support tickets from when they're open and submitted to when they're finally closed, customer surveys, applicants, and even tracking equipment that you issue to your team members. Once again, this is just a uh, finite set of examples that I've given, given you, but you can really define these columns exactly how you want for your process. So that is column types. The idea here is that you use column types on boards to add and rename columns as specific properties of the row in the board. And so for these example uh, processes, you would then go into each one of these boards and add columns <clears throat> to track the relevant data within that board. Great. So let's move on to the third building block, views. Views allow you to see the same underlying data in the board in various ways. And so for, for this building block, I actually want to go ahead and do a live build. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and build a support ticket process, and then I will go ahead and use views to show you how you can see that data, that same data in that board in various ways. All right, so let's go ahead and switch my screen briefly here. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yep, you're all good. Excellent. So within this board, uh, we have contacts, but we're actually gonna be creating a, a new board. And we're gonna be calling this board support tickets. And when I cl click that add button, a little portal pops up where I can name my board, decide the level of privacy that I want on the board, for this example, we'll go ahead and use uh, main so that everyone has access to it. And we can select the things that we're managing in this board. And for this example, these rows will represent tickets. And I will create that board. So we have our support ticket board. And what's the first step? Well. We've defined what the board will be used for, managing support tickets. That's our process. And let's now define groups as the stages that this will go through. So perhaps we have new tickets, and maybe we want to track which tickets are then assigned. We'll add a group to look at tickets that are working or in progress. And let's add another group to define the last stage of the process completed tickets. And when you create a new board from scratch, you're going to get some column types for free. So you can see we already have a person column, we already have a status column, and we already have a date column. So let's go ahead and rename this to ticket owner. Let's go name this ticket status. And on ticket status, right now we have the options of working on it, stuck, and done, but let's actually add an additional label here. We actually want to know new tickets as well and apply. Let's say that we want to redefine this date to be the date that this ticket was submitted. And let's go ahead and rename this to be useful files. And you can go ahead and collapse just like that. So already we have a board called support tickets with some useful data points. Who's the ticket owner? What is the ticket status and the submitted date? Once we finish building this board, I'll go ahead and revert back to our third building block, which will be views. So let's add just a couple of more pieces of data. So you can add columns using this plus button right here. I just added a text column and let's go ahead and name that contact email, specifically the sorry, contact name, specifically the name of the person who's submitted the support ticket. Let's also add an email to get the person's email. 
And let's add a, another date column that represents the date at which this is closed. The ticket is closed. So now it's really starting to look like a ticket management board. The last thing that I'll go ahead and add is a more advanced column type called formulas. So formulas allow you to take any of the other data and manipulate it. <clears throat> so for the support ticket, I'll go ahead and calculate time to resolve. And by time to resolve, what I mean is the days between when it's closed and when it was submitted. So I'm gonna use this pre-built formula called days, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use the difference between the closed date and the submitted date and set that formula. None of these items are gonna be populated because there's no data in either of, sorry, there's no data in the close date. So it actually has nothing to calculate right now. <clears throat> I will also go ahead and customize this unit by clicking on the bottom here and writing in days. All right, so we have our board, ticket owner, ticket status, submitted date, useful files, contact name, email, and close date with a, a formula that calculates time to resolve. So that's how fast you can build a process within monday.com. I'm gonna flip over to a board that already has a bunch of dummy data populated. It's this other board called support tickets. And it's actually the same board that I just built out right here. The only difference is, is I have a bunch of dummy data inside of here. So you can see, we have these same stages. We have a new stage, an assigned group, a working group, and a completed group. We have the contact's name tracked in a text file, or text column. We have ticket owner for person, ticket status with new, working on it, stuck and done, a submitted date, useful files, a contact's email, close date, and time to resolve. So the structure is exactly the same with data here. And this brings me to this third building block. We've built out the process, we've defined our columns, and now we're ready to look at different views. So the views are available up here in this plus button. If you click this plus button, you'll be able to see all of the different types of views that you can see the same data in various ways. I'm gonna use uh, specific examples like form. So I've built out a form view already. A form view is super valuable because you can see, you can actually configure a form that external parties can use to submit tickets into this board. So what this allows for is you could embed this form, which is a view, and the view is really just giving you the same column types that you've defined in your board and allowing some external person to submit information on that board. So let's go ahead and preview this view. This is a public URL. So let's say that I have a support ticket and let's give this ticket a name. Let's say that the billing page. Hey, Brian, just, just so you know, I think that might've opened in a different screen. Oh, got it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, let me go ahead and reshare my screen. This is the uh, external URL here, the billing page. Uh, sorry, the, the support ticket submission form. And we're going to give our ticket a name, the billing page. Isn't loading. And we're going to ask the person who's submitting this ticket to identify themselves. Brian or Gone, and put in their email so that we can contact them if things uh, go wrong while we're trying to resolve the ticket. And tell us about your issue. This is a place where they can go ahead and just post details about why the billing page isn't loading. The widget in the top right isn't showing up. And they also have an opportunity in the useful files column to go ahead and upload any relevant files and they can click submit. And what that did is it built an item on that board that we were building. So let's go back over to our board 
click on main table and you can see here that the billing page isn't loading that ticket that i just submitted using the form is now in the new tab here with the contacts name the contacts email and even a submitted date posted so that is the form view and it allows you to get external submissions into your private board the second view that I want to show you is the Kanban view. So this is an internal view that switches your table view into a uh, Kanban board where you can take the same items that live in your board across different statuses. Right. And as you're taking this item through its process here, this data is actually changing within the board. So if I go back to unable to log into account for Michelle Pagnota here, you can see that it has a ticket status of stuck. And if I go back to the Kanban view and move it to done, you'll see that in this main table, it's switched to done and we've built out a workflow, which we'll get to in this next section that automatically moves the item down to completed. So that's the benefit of the Kanban view is it gives you a visual step by step uh, view where you can take these tiles through their stages. The third view that I want to review is the workload view. So the workload view is looking at that same board and grouping the tickets by who is assigned to them in the ticket owner column. So you can see that Michelle has two tickets that were submitted on Friday. I have two tickets that were submitted on Monday. And it shows red anytime someone's not available and they've been assigned tickets. For instance, Michelle and operations here are not supposed to be working on the weekends, but they've been assigned tickets on the weekend. So the workload view is just one example of the many views, but this one specifically allows you to see the burden of work and how it's assigned across the data within your board. So the reason why we started this webinar with how to build boards and how to use column types properly is because all of these views depend on a properly built board and a properly used column types. Um, because if you were to use a text column in place of this ticket owner column, you wouldn't be able to use the workload widget. And so it's really important to make sure that you're able to use some of these more advanced features and views by building out your board properly with, with proper data types and column types. So the fourth view that I want to show you is chart. And chart allows you to do what you think it does. You're able to go ahead and build reporting widgets that look at the data within the board and give you charts bar charts, line charts, and numbers. So for this example, you can see that we've built out a widget that shows support tickets by person. So this chart is showing grouped by the ticket owner column type, show me the number of tickets, and then stack the information by the status of the tickets. So we can see that I have six total tickets, two of them are done, three of them are new, and one of them I'm working on. In this widget, we have a number, and the number that we're referencing is the time to resolve column. And we're telling the system here to average the time to resolve across all of the tickets. So you can see the average number of days that it takes to resolve a ticket is 2.75 days. And then we have a widget that looks at the daily ticket volume. This chart is looking at the date column, the submitted column date, and it's counting the number of tickets in the board that have a specific day that these tickets were submitted. So you can see on May 8th, four tickets were submitted, whereas on May 11th, eight tickets were submitted. So that is the chart view. And all of these views rely on the underlying data within the board. So it's very important to build out these columns properly. So we use views to visualize the same underlying data on, on the board 
in various ways. And some of my favorite views are form, Kanban, chart, and workload. So let's go ahead and move on to the last building block. The last building block is the workflow builder. And I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly go back to um, our slide deck here. All right, so we built a support ticket board. We defined our groups, defined our column types. We went ahead and reviewed forms, Kanban, chart, and workload views. And we uh, noted that views are used to visualize the same underlying data in various ways. So now we're talking about the workflow building block. This workflow building block allows you to build automations within the board. And it's a very intuitive builder that Monday.com gives you to build these things. There's two parts of the workflow builder. There's the trigger, when this happens, and then there's the action, then do this. And when you go into the workflow builder, which we'll be actually building four workflows on our previous board example, um, you will see that when you click on when this happens, you'll get options. And these options are referencing the same column types within your board. When a status changes, when a date arrives, when a person is assigned. These are the triggers for automations when this happens. And then you click on then do this, and then you're able to select the actions that you want to happen within the board. So let's go ahead and build some automations. So we're gonna build four automations. We're gonna build in our support ticket board, when an item is created, set the ticket status to new, and set the submitted date to today. We're gonna build a second automation that when the ticket owner is assigned, move that ticket to the assigned group. We're gonna build when ticket status changes to working on it, move item to working. And then the last one that we're gonna build is when ticket status changes to done, set the close date to today and move that item to completed. So the workflow building block allows you to reduce the clicks that your team has to do when certain actions happen within the board. So let's go build these automations in the board. And I will share my screen and we will portal back over here. All right. So let's go over to our blank board right here. The way that you get to the workflow automation engine is you click on this button in the top right here. And um, you will use create custom automation. So when this happens, and the thing that we're gonna be triggering is when the item is created, set the ticket status to new. So change status, which status, the ticket status to new. And then if you wanna add a second action you click on the plus button and we want to set the date specifically we want to set the submitted date to today and create automation the second automation that we wanted to build is when the ticket owner is assigned when person is assigned ticket owner then move the item to assigned and we'll create that automation the third automation that we want to build is when the ticket status ticket status changes to working on it, we want to move this item to the working on it group. And then the fourth automation that we want to build out is when the ticket status changes, ticket status changes to done, we want to move this item to the completed stage and we want to set the date to today. Which date? The close date. And create that automation. And so now, when we have items that are created, we should see these automations happen. So let's go ahead and delete these example pieces of data. And let's assume that someone submitted a ticket using our form. Um, let's assume that they can't log in. 
When I enter a line item, you'll see that the ticket status will be switched to new and our submitted date will be marked as today. Someone will come in, maybe it's the customer support manager, and will go and assign this ticket to a specific person. Well, our automation, when ticket owner is assigned, move item to assigned, just triggered and moved it down to assigned. Brian will get a notification in the system and uh, he will come in here and start to work on it. Well, our automation, when ticket status changes to working on it, move item to working, we'll move this down into the next stage. And then finally, when Brian's done, he'll go ahead and press done. It will move down into completed and you will see that the close date will be marked today. And finally, we have some data and time to resolve, but you know, May 11th minus May 11th is zero. So let's assume that this is the close date is tomorrow. And you can see that our formula is calculating the difference between these days. Here. So that is the basis of the workflow engine. And now using those four building blocks, creating a board, creating columns, using views and building out workflows, we have a workflow for supporting, uh, handling support tickets across the process there. So let me go ahead and quickly switch views to our presentation. So we've created these four workflows in our uh, board and the last thing that I want to do is just wrap up on workflows. You build workflow statements using and referencing the column properties to reduce clicks for your team. The workflow engine is super intuitive. You're just building logic statements that do certain things triggered by uh, an initial action. So these are the building blocks of Monday.com. Boards, columns, views and workflows. There are four things to remember when you want to build a scalable process within monday.com. The first thing is define your boards as the processes that make up your organization and define the groups as the stages that that specific process goes through. Build out your board and when you do that add columns then rename those columns as the specific properties of the rows for that board. So for support tickets, you'll just rename those same column types as things that represent data for support. Same goes for content calendar, same goes for CRM, and same goes for any other process that you wanna build. The third thing to remember is use views to visualize the same underlying data various ways. You can build forms, Kanban boards. You can view that same data in a calendar if you want, and you can explore all of the different views by going up into that plus button at the top of your board. Four, build workflow statements, referencing the column properties to reduce clicks for your team. This is how you successfully build a process in monday.com. And ultimately my goal at the end of this webinar was to get you to be able to go build a process yourself for your organization. So I appreciate you listening to this webinar and we'll get started with any questions that you all have. Thank you.